Another operation that can be performed on two vectors with various applications is the vector product of vectors. The vector product, also known as the cross product, is an operation that takes two vectors, produces another vector, which is perpendicular to the original two. Because it produces another vector, that's why we call it a vector product. It's also called a cross product because that's the symbol we use when we're calculating the vector product. There's various applications, and we'll see one later. The cross product of an x vector given in Cartesian form and a y vector in Cartesian form is given by this rather long rule, x2, y3, minus x3, y2 in the i direction, and so on down the line. It's a little hard to remember, so there's another way that we can actually do it, although you're welcome to remember it if you like to. Another way to figure it out is to call use what's called the determinant method. The determinant is something that's usually used when we work with matrices, but it's also something that pops up when finding cross products, and it works like this. First, we form a 3 by 3 table with the unit vectors on the top, the components of the x vector in the middle, x1, x2, and x3, and the components of the y vector on the bottom, y1, y2, and y3. To show that we're calculating a determinant, we wrap it in vertical lines. The determinant works by picking a row or column and then expanding around the matrix, or table, if you like. We're going to work here, when we're doing cross products, with the top row, ijk row. First, we write down the first element in our yellow row, i. Then, we look at everything in the 3x3 three three table that's not in that row, or i's column. In other words, this piece here. And we do a crisscross. We cross from the top left to the bottom right, and multiply, x2, y3. And then we subtract from the top right to the bottom left, take away x3, y2. You can see that this is generating exactly the same as we have in the formula above. Moving on to the next element, the j element, we're going to cycle from a plus to a minus. So we write a minus and the j element. Then we're going to do another crisscross product, but this time we cross out the row and the column and we're left with these pieces. We go top left to bottom right, x1, y3, take away top right to bottom left, x3 times y1. Finally, when we move on to the k element, we have k crossing out its row and column, and we do a crisscross on this piece. Cycling back to a plus, k vector, x1, y2, minus x2, y1. which you can see if you compare with above, is exactly the same as this piece, the J component is the same as this piece, and we've already seen that the I component is the same. If you do a few of these determinants, that becomes a little bit easier than trying to remember this formula. But really, either way will work, and it's completely up to you. So let's try out an example. Pause the video now, and try to at least do the first two of these, A crossed with B, and B crossed with A. First up, write the vectors in the matrix or table determinant form. Then proceed to figure out the i component, j component and k component with the crisscross motion. When you do this, you should find that your result is 10i plus 3j plus 11k. Now do the same for the b cross a, part b. This time when we expand the determinant, we end up with minus 10i minus 3j minus 11k. Looking back, this is exactly the same as A cross B, with all minus signs instead of plus signs. So to answer part C, what is the relationship between the two results, we can say that the two results are just negatives of each other. In other words, A crossed with B is equal to minus B crossed with A. We don't really need those brackets, so we can leave them off. A cross B is minus B cross A. Part D asks us to write a unit vector in the direction perpendicular to both A and B. Remember at the start that we said that the vector or cross product does exactly that, takes two vectors and gives a vector which is perpendicular to both of them. So we can simply say that a vector perpendicular to both A and B is simply A cross B. So A cross B 
is a vector perpendicular to both A and B. We could have also used B cross A, it doesn't really matter. The answer to part C is actually a rule that carries for all vectors, so you can keep that in mind if you like. To finish off, there's also a geometric form of the cross product. It looks a little bit similar to what we found with the dot product because it has a magnitude of x and a magnitude of y and then something to do with the angle between the vectors. This time it's a sine instead of a cosine. But there's this funny vector hanging on at the end. Z is just a unit vector perpendicular to both x and y. Sometimes that's useful. The magnitude of the cross product, x crossed with y, actually gives us the area of a parallelogram formed by an x vector and a y vector. So sometimes that also comes in handy. You can imagine trying to figure out the space inside this area here. You can just do that with the magnitude of the cross product of the two vectors. So that's it for the vector product of vectors. If you're looking at other texts, just check out the similar section and see if it does things in a different way or a way that makes things easier to understand for you. Sometimes it'll also extend things to other things that we haven't looked at in the video. Make sure you're attempting the exercises from the worksheet and getting help when